G'day all. So I decided to take a little journey down to Southampton and visit the Bewley Motor Museum, where I discovered that once again the Bonded Motion exhibition was back on display, uh, this time in conjunction with the latest release of the James Bond outing No Time to Die, where several of the vehicles featured in that film were on display to the public. So I decided to go visit and film, and I also discovered that the museum was home to a number of rare and great motor vehicles as well, uh, ranging from Formula 1 racing cars, you know, classic motor vehicles, motorbikes, and other great pieces of motoring history as I heard several mentions of just how big the collection was in this secluded area, and I must say, I was not disappointed at all. So I decided to make a day of it and film the exhibition, and even discuss one or two of the vehicles that I came across that were film affiliated, as several were on display as well. And even just some of the best motor vehicles I've ever seen in the world were housed here at this museum. Uh, as mentioned, a number of great racing cars and motorbikes, and even several land speed legends as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this day out, and yeah, let's get right into it. So here we are today at the Bewley Motor Museum. We're here to see the Bonded Motion exhibition, where there's a number of cars from recently released No Time to Die James Bond film. And we're just gonna have a look there and just have a bit of a discussion about the cars, because they're actually screen used cars. And we're just gonna delve into some of the history of them and just their usage. We're here now at the Bewley Motor Museum where it has on display the Bond in Motion exhibition where there are several cars from the latest James Bond film No Time to Die that are featured here prominently that were actually used on screen. And here we are with the James Bond classic affiliated DB5, the 1964 Aston Martin DB5, which basically has become a staple in the James Bond franchise ever since its first introduction into the series in 1964's Goldfinger, starring Sean Connery. Now, this one here is one of eight custom made by Aston Martin used for the film No Time to Die, starring Daniel Craig. Now, in that film, it starts off with one of the best car chases in the franchise altogether. Like, it just has one of the best action scenes where this car shines perhaps more than any other film apart from its original incarnation in Goldfinger. Now, in No Time to Die, the producers had obtained 10 Aston Martin DB5s, where eight, as mentioned, were custom built to be used for stunts and to be crashed and so forth, and two were genuine Aston Martin DB5s brought in for the production. Now, over the years, this car has featured in eight official James Bond movies, where, again, it's starting off with the 1964, which some would consider to be the best James Bond outing, Goldfinger where James Bond had been told that his Bentley had been replaced and this was the car that did it. And as soon as it went on screen and Q showed all those gadgets, people just basically fell in love with it. Now, the producers had obtained two DB5s from Aston Martin where they delivered them. Now, originally they came in the bonnet red color scheme. And the one request that the producers had was before any modifications were made, could they repaint the cars to match what in the 1959 novel of Goldfinger was basically James Bond's choice was more or less, it wasn't the DB5, but it was the DB Mark III. And James Bond had chose that over the 3.4 litre Jaguar. One of the main reasons he chose it was because of its color scheme, which was Battleship Grey. Now, as mentioned, the producers had requested that the car's been changed from its initial red color 
to match that gray scheme, which Aston Martin had no problem. They changed it and they gave us the classic, the now classic color scheme of silver birch that this car features in and it's featured ever since its first introduction. Now, as mentioned over the years, it had featured in a number of the films. Its next outing would be in the follow-up to the Sean Connery film, Thunderball, which again, it had a pre-title sequence uh, action sequence with this car and again be shown used within the film with its gadgets uh, slightly hindered this time compared to its first outing in Goldfinger where you saw the car you know use its uh, guns at the front uh, smoke screen and even its iconic ejector seat which had only ever been used once but has always been hinted at and now even with this one here there's still hints of the ejector seat where you can see the design on the roof but this one here in particular is only drawn on, so it's only painted on. It's not exactly even built for that because it never got used ever since then. Now, despite the fact that it's always been affiliated with Sean Connery and classic Bond, this car had only ever featured in two of the original James Bond films from that era of the 1960s. It would not be reintroduced again officially until Pierce Brosnan's first outing as James Bond in Goldeneye. And again, it featured in Tomorrow Never Dies and in the deleted scene in The World Is Not Enough. It would be the Daniel Craig James Bond outing where this car would once again be properly like be introduced to come back. And with the exception of Quantum of Solace, it has been in every Daniel Craig James Bond film. It would be in Skyfall where this car once again would shine and be shown to play off its gadgets, to play off you know, some of its unique aspects to it. But it has been in this last film, No Time to Die, with this car basically has gone out in the bank, so to speak. It just was one of the best sequence to see that car go up against, you know, two Jaguar XFs. And to see the car just basically, after all these years, still have that appeal. You know, people might say, oh, because it's of its age, you know, like being so many decades old now from 1964 to see this car, it's now, it still has not lost pretty much any of its charm. And this exhibition here, just to see this car is just so, such a splendor to see up front and up close and again as mentioned although this is not a genuine db5 it was manufactured by aston martin for the film itself and this is a screen used car it is a james bond screen used cars and it's just something to have here and just something to enjoy where just knowing this car to watch just knowing this car is here to see just something to behold The other vehicle we see Bond commandeer quickly in the film as the first action piece takes place that is on display here as well is the 2019 Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE where again we see Craig's Bond show off some of his riding skills like he did previously in Skyfall. With a 1200cc engine and 90 brake horsepower, three Triumphs were brought in and modified to handle some of the amazing stunts that took place in the narrow streets of Matera. In 2020 Triumph released the new Scrambler 1200 to coincide with No Time to Die and named it the Bond Edition which shared a similar style and paint scheme to the one shown in the film. Coming out with about 81 pound-feet of torque and a top speed of around 135 miles per hour, the bike really does get a chance to shine in this film and is a welcome addition to see up close here at the exhibition. So the other good thing about this display is not just the cars and bikes on show, but several other No Time to Die film props and other historical Bond memorabilia is available for public viewing as well. Tucked above it slightly out of view, the museum also got its hands on a life-size model of the submersible glider we see provided by Q Branch, where Bond and Lashana Lynch's character Nomi piloted the film towards the end, and was designed by No Time to Die's concept artist Tim Browning, which was nicknamed the Stealthy Bird by Q in the film. Also included on display is the 1977 Land Rover Series 3 Bond is seen driving during his time away from MI6, and the stunt used 2019 Land Rover Defender 110 as one of several used in another of the great chase sequences in No Time to Die, midway through the film, which still bears its damage sustained, and alongside is the inclusion of the Royal Alloy Scooter, ridden by the character of Nomi. The other standout of the secondary vehicle seen in the film is a 1957-283 V8 Chevrolet Bel Air, seen briefly commandeered in the streets of Cuba by CIA agent Paloma, played to great comedic and action effect by actress Ana de Armas. This is a nod to James Bond's first film outing in Dr. No, where Bond is picked up at the airport in the same model and colour Bel Air, a la convertible as opposed to a hardtop as shown here. For me, the second best highlight of the Bond in Motion exhibition, or perhaps the best, is the Bond car that made a welcome return into the series after being absent for nearly 35 years. 
And that is the other Aston Martin driven by James Bond that could compete with the DB5 in looks and style and she expected to behold. Now making a comeback into the James Bond franchise is this classic 1979 Aston Martin V8 which would become James Bond's second vehicle of choice in No Time to Die. One of the main reasons the V8 Mark IV was brought back was due to a fondness to the car by director Kerry Fukunaga as he was a fan of the car since it made its first and only appearance in Timothy Dalton's debut outing as Bond in The Living Daylights. This Aston Martin featured in the exhibition is one of three used in the latest film, though it was not portrayed in any spectacular fashion in the story as was the case in the 1987 Bond film, yet was still a welcome return to the franchise given its stylish appeal. Produced from 1977 to 1989, upon its launch, the V8 Mark IV was the world's fastest production car. Equipped with a 5.3 litre V8 engine and a top speed said to be around 170 miles per hour, putting out about 370 brake horsepower. Hail as Britain's first supercar, it could achieve 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds and was one tenth faster than the Ferrari Daytona. Though no longer seen skiing on ice or blasting out rockets, one of the V8's most striking features apart from its beautiful sleek style and curves is its Cumberland grey paint scheme and just its wonderful timeless appeal that still holds even to this day. The third and final Aston Martin in the exhibition is the newly introduced Aston Martin DBS Superleggera which is seen being driven by Lashana Lynch's character. Another beauty indeed, this 2020 model has a 5.2 litre engine and outputs 715 brake horsepower with its twin turbo V12 engine reaching the top speed said to be around 211 miles per hour and is presented in a wonderful xenon grey paint scheme. This, along with the concept Valhalla briefly seen in No Time to Die, is the first time four different Aston Martins have featured together in one James Bond film. Moving on from the exhibition itself, just wondering about the museum, it's just amazing to see some of these cars, some of which I never even expected to see, you know, but it was just a massive variety of different cars, you know, going from Jensen's to Jaguars to Rolls Royces, you name it, it's pretty much, apart from not having many American muscle cars, like this is more the European classics that you hear about, you know, that uh, the ones that came out in the 60s and the 50s and even older cars, even much more like I was impressed with the older cars. But again, also you got some wonderful racing cars and I was also surprised to find a screen used racing car being featured at this museum. So here at the Bewley Motor Museum, you'll find a real treat here. This is an actual screen used 1969 Porsche 917 that was used in the 1970 Steve McQueen racing classic Le Mans. Now, this one here was crashed during production and would eventually be rebuilt and has now been offered by its owner for display here at the Bewley Motor Museum. Now, as I mentioned, this one here was crashed during production and it was driven by racer David Piper, which unfortunately led to him losing his leg during the crash as a result. Now, when the Porsche 917 came out, it was one of the most dominating vehicles, racing vehicles to ever come out from any company. Now, when the Porsche 917 was released in 1969, it would go on to win Le Mans in 1970 and 1971, basically ending the reign of the Ford GT40. It had come out with a 5-litre flat 12 engine, set to produce around 630 brake horsepower and a top speed around 220 miles per hour, which for any standards, that's very impressive. Come post-1971, however, specifications had changed and this car could no longer compete as was. But this car here in particular had been the turning point for racing, much like the GT40 had been for Ford and so forth. But this one here was just thought to be a pure racing beast. Like people who have gotten behind the wheel of it said there's never been anything like it before or since. I mean, now that things are different, technology has improved. But back then this was just a pure racing machine. And to see one in person here at the Bewley Motor Museum and an actual screen used one, that was used in a classic Steve McQueen classic movie is just a real treat to see here. So continuing on, along with the other displays that I've mentioned, like there were just some random displays of uh, memorabilia from anything affiliated with cars and movies throughout the history. The one thing that I think impressed me the most, basically the thing that I didn't expect to see was just the museum's dedication to racing cars. I was not sure that I was going to see these, but as I moved along, I was that. just amazed to see the effort that the Pretty museum good. had put in in displaying some of these wonderful cars. And not only just wonderful cars, we're talking about cars that were part of the history itself, part of racing history, as a matter of fact. To see these up close and personal and to see the dedication they put in displaying these wonderful works of racing machinery 
and throughout that history, you know, going back to the, perhaps the golden era of Formula One, you know, from the 80s and the 90s, as many would consider, like, probably depending which who you talk to, you got a chance to see at this exhibition just, like I said, that dedication to racing, to, like, just these marvels of the uh, performance cars and just the engines, just to see them on display, like, actual, you know, Formula One engine, racing engines, and all the just splendor that comes with wandering about. And then... Also, the other thing I did not expect at all was to come across the section where it just had all these motorcycles, just these great-looking, beautiful, on-display motorcycles throughout the history. And not only just the ones that have probably made historical impact, be it on racing or just when they were released, but also some custom ones. And even going back even further, some of the earliest models you can imagine, and even one or two, like, uh, war vehicles. And as I walked about, I came across another film favorite, another film classic, where I thought, I'm going to have to stop and talk about this one, because this one just came out of nowhere, but it does affiliate itself with James Bond, so it was worth mentioning. So another movie-based car you'll find here at the Motor Museum is an actually screen-used version of the 1968 Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, custom-made for the movie with the same name. And this one here is one of six that was created for the movie. Now, it's kind of fitting to be here now and filming the Bond in Motion exhibition, as this is sort of like a cousin to the Bond franchise itself, as the movie was produced by Ian Productions, and it was penned by Ian Fleming himself, and later adapted for the screen by writing legend Roald Dahl. Now, this one here is, as I mentioned, is one of six custom built for the film, and it was custom built by Alan Mann. Now, this one here is not based on any car in particular, like it's not, uh, based on any particular model, but it is inspired by the racing cars of the 1920s. Now, the one thing you won't find is like an old-time engine. What you will find under the hood, which usually what they put, was a 3.0-litre V6 Essex Ford engine, which produced about 128 horsepower and said to have a top speed of around about 100 miles per hour, give or take. Now, in the film, this car did some amazing things. It had alternative modes and... Uh, one of them was an actual uh, flying craft, an aircraft, and also an aqua craft. And you'd see it, you know, go on the water. Now, for 1968, that was something quite amazing. And just to see one in person, for all those people who grew up with it as kids, or all those people who watched it with their parents, you know, little kids, all these decades later, see one here now up close in person is quite impressive. And not only that, just to see its size as well, it's just, just something to behold. And yeah, it's just a treat to see here today along with the Bond in Motion exhibition. As the day came to its end, I made my way to the World of Top Gear exhibition that was also on display at the Bewley Motor Museum, which along with an almost shrine to the Stig himself, features a number of the wacky cars and other vehicles that had been showcased in the hit TV show throughout the years in some of its most memorable episodes seen worldwide. One of the last displays I came across was the on-screen cars exhibit, which housed some memorable TV and movie cars such as the flying 1962 Ford Anglia seen in Harry Potter, yet another James Bond featured vehicle, the mini gun toting 2002 Jaguar XKR from Die Another Day, and the unforgettable Mr. V 1977 Mini 1000 Mark IV. So having my day come to an end, I must say I was pleasantly surprised and very happy that the experience I had today, where not knowing about this museum before, not knowing about the Bewley Motor Museum, until recently, until I found out that the Bond in Motion exhibition was back on display and coming over to see the cars, coming over to see the DB5 and the Aston Martin V8 and just some of the other cars here. I was just so pleasantly surprised to see that several other cars that I would not have expected to see were here, like movie-based cars, racing-based cars. Just the display itself, I was not knowing what to expect given the secluded area of where this museum is. And after coming and seeing this museum face-to-face, -face, just coming up in person, and seeing what they've got, all these just amazing racing cars, these motorbikes, you know, you've got a wide variety, just a wide range, and just some unique motor vehicles from history, be it screen used, or even like historical racing events, and some other vehicles that I would never have thought I'd come across at all, like you've got your land speed record cars, rally cars, racing cars, just all these amazing cars I never thought I would have seen in person over all these years. So I hope you enjoyed this day out at the Bewley Motor Museum, visiting the Bond in Motion exhibition, which I highly recommend if you've got the opportunity to go see. And special shout out to Richard and the museum for letting me come by and film the exhibition itself. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.